All right, here we go. So this, as far as you know, is Mac Geek Up 1046 for Monday, July 15th, National Be a Dork Day, 2024. That's really loud. It's hot. <laughs> March back and forth. <laughs> what happened? Why'd the music stop? Is it because I walked too far away? All right, well, the music kept going. It's fine. <laughs> we'll hear it. <laughs> Greetings, folks, and welcome to Mac Geek Up, the show where we take your tips, we share them, we take your cool stuff found, and we share them. We take your questions and attempt to answer them. And uh, uh, our sponsors for this episode are uh, fastmail.com slash mgg and coda.io slash mgg. We will talk more about those later. In fact, I had ChatGPT write me some scripts and told it to make me say strange things. So you get to figure out what it's making me say as I learn what it's making me say. Here in Crystal Lake, Illinois, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here next to him, I'm Adam Christensen. And here in another part of Crystal Lake, Illinois, it's Pilot Pete. Evening, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. This is cool. Another live. Yeah. So everybody who's listening at home, uh, or wherever you're listening to the audio or the video of this, assuming at all the technology works, uh, we are doing this live here at Max Stock. Uh, it's happening on Friday the 12th at 8:30 or so in the evening, and um, I, I will ask because we are recording this and releasing it to the audience, assuming everything works, that. Uh, if you have anything to add, and I'm, I'm addressing the audience here, the, the in-person, our live studio audience. Live studio audience. Uh, <laughs> that uh, you- That Geek Gab was filmed before a live into, studio audience. That's right. <laughs> that you talk into the microphone and there's one around so that everybody can hear See you. See Brian. Brian, yes, Brian will, will help us. And, and thanks to Roger Harmon for um, recording, AKA. engineering, and producing this. So this is outstanding. Um, we will do Stump the Geek. Stump the Geek? Stump the Geek, right? Does anyone, I have questions to stump my friends up here. I'm sure uh -oh. they have questions for Rut me. Row. Pete always has questions to stump me. Um, but Kelly, it sure looks like <laughs> Kelly wants to start. So can First we get Kelly here. a microphone, please? <laughs> Hi. So this is a thing that's been happening to me occasionally and I'm not sure why. Okay. Um, going along. Seek medical attention. Now, yeah. Um, every so often, one of my devices, obviously I have a few, uh, will go, I'll, I'll try to do something that involves being signed into an Apple ID. And I get, no, I think that's the technical term. And your Apple ID is locked, and you need to go unlock your Apple ID. So I have to go find a device that is not the one where I got the warning. And then I can either unlock my Apple ID or I can unlock it and reset my password. And I haven't done anything weird. Like I've tried to keep track of what I've been, what kind of activity I have against my Apple ID, what weird stuff I'm doing with my devices. I don't have anything on beta right now. And I'm trying to figure out what's locking my Apple ID. I've got a question first. Are you able to ignore it and continue? No. Okay. Yeah, because it sounds like that, that thing there was that, that bug a, while a couple ago. weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. And yeah. I ended up resetting I got that too. all my iCloud passwords and I didn't have to. That was really fun. This is interesting because you're not alone. I mean, there was that thing that happened. <laughs> yes. And which I also got, which was not fun. Right. Yeah. Some of us did, some of us didn't. Do not recommend. No. Yeah. 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 One star. Uh, <laughs> But many people who got that have written in saying that they see exactly what you are seeing. And I, while I can't say for certain that it is 100% correlation, everyone that we've heard from about it did have the magic, you know, Friday night, Saturday night, whatever it was, reset your password, everything's gone awry issue. Yeah. So it seems like perhaps this might be an after effect okay. of, of this. Uh, we'll call it a flashback. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So 
have you tried just like rebooting that device and seeing if it magically goes away? That I've not tried. I also haven't done sign out of every single device and then wait 20 minutes and then add one and wait 20 minutes, rinse, repeat. Yeah. Because I feel like I would rather gouge out my eyes with a grapefruit spoon and that might be more efficient between the two. <laughs> so I just want, like, I had it happen a couple of times before the thing. Yeah. And I don't know oh. what's tripping it. So when that happened, I just went, oh, great. This is just me getting escalated from, Does it used to just sort of deny me, but then I saw a bunch of other people having the same problem with that Friday could, night issue. We could go deep down a, a rabbit hole here. We're already deep down a rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> but what I'm wondering is, 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 is there, like clearly there is something triggering it. We don't know what the something is. It might be Apple's uh, focus slash obsession, you pick whichever right. word you want, uh, with, with security, which is not a bad thing, but like we always say, you know, security is a continuum. You pick ultimate convenience versus ultimate security, and sometimes your devices pick for you, and it's a different spot than you would have chosen. Does your, so I'm trying to think of what could be changing for you. We know that the whole location, if you turn it on on your phone, you know, you move, you're not at home or a known location, and then you can't change passwords. So there's that, but are there other things like that that might be happening that we aren't, that Apple doesn't necessarily shout from the rooftops? And one of them could be, does your IP address at home, like your, your internet, based like your, your, right. your whatever your your cable modem or your fiber or whatever does the ip address for that change and if so is its location is the location that is in the you know max mine databases of the world that says oh this ip address is located in this city and the new one does it think that your home is moving around the country or around a region as opposed to staying in the same place I'm just trying to think of things that yeah. would, that if I was the engineer behind this and tasked with, we better be careful, what is the, what's, what's the criteria right. tree look like? So. Yeah. My IP address doesn't change that much. Um, I'm not doing it, like I'm not getting the error when I'm not home, anything mm -hmm. like that. So I couldn't, I can't find anything that does it, so. Yeah. That All might right. be a stump. Uh, yeah, I think, it, I think I think we've we've succeeded. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. We'll uh, that's the end. Sorry. Oh, stumped Apple. We have. Uh, it's, it looks a like comment Linda, or a question. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We'll find out. So I have a thing, and I have a screenshot of it because it's somewhat complicated, uh -oh. and this has been showing up on my iPad for a couple of years. Years. It will, it will go away if I hit the cancel button, but I would like to buy a new iPad, and I would like when I transfer my data from this one to the new one for this thing to not be there. The thing says, cannot verify server identity. The identity of, and there's a long string of numbers and letters, long, dot, uh, looks like rackcdn.com cannot be verified. What's the very beginning of that URL or uh, address? Three three six a one c c c. Okay, so it, okay, great. I, I wasn't sure if something in there was going to tell us what it is. It, it's either, most likely, either a subscribed calendar or subscribed contact, and and it's and your system is trying to update from probably a calendar, right? Or that that you subscribe to. I don't know what your interests are, but let's say you follow a sports team and years ago you subscribed or a kid's sports team. I can speak to this where, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the server went away and whatever is currently answering is not giving the right security certificate. It's and it's telling you it's not giving the right security certificate. So I would look in calendars and see if you have something there that you've subscribed to that's failing or or something the rack cdn is i believe a rack space, rack space hosted yeah. uh, something but but that's not 
enough to help you narrow down what it is. Okay. All right. I will try calendars. It seems odd to me because I normally have the same calendars on all my other devices, and I have you know a Mac Studio, a MacBook Air. Uh, sometimes the calendars, depending on how you added them, sometimes they are on my iPad calendars and not synced across iCloud. This is a calendar Could subscription, not a calendar. Could it also be like a third-party app that has syncing that's not like yeah, iCloud sure. syncing? Yeah, sure. Yeah. For, for what yeah, but, yeah, you, but the third-party app, oh, yeah, if it's got background activity. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Like it's trying to pull things down in the background or, yeah. For what it's worth, I spoke with Mike Potter before, and he suggested making sure I'd get rid of any unused apps, including any that have you know, died and gone away. So that's that'd not a bad advice. idea yeah. anyway. That'd be yeah. good advice. Yeah. 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 Just clean things up before. And it's a good thing to do anyway before you transferring to a new, new device is just clean house. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Awesome. We'll let John go. Uh -oh. John F. Braun. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. hey, John. All right. This one's been bugging me for. I don't know when it started or what caused it, but I'll just I'll try to describe it to you. So in the sidebar, there's an iCloud category, and then there's an iCloud drive. And then to the right of that is a little circle, like a progress circle. And here's what it says, and it keeps doing this. So right now I'll read it to you. Uploading one item, 300K of 315 kilobytes. And it just sits there. It, and it, and, and I was taking pictures r r for forever. Where where is this sitting? Um, next to iCloud Drive. In the iCloud sidebar, there's oh. an iCloud Drive icon. Oh and yeah, next okay. To it is is a little so, progress. Yeah. It sounds like like a corrupt file that's not yeah. syncing properly. The it, thing is, this I is this is not just started here at MacStock, right? Oh no no, this has okay. been going on. Because the only thing slower than the elevators here is the Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. So, yeah. okay. So, the thing is, I don't know. I'm not getting enough information as to which file. It's a tiny little file. You know, again, it's 300K yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. of whatever. But I don't know which file it's getting stuck on. Mac OS is not giving me enough information. There should so, be a log, right? no, uh, what's his face? Um, Howard at Eclectic Light makes utilities that will tell you details about iCloud Drive that, that are, I mean, it basically does a lot of log parsing that he's figured out what filters to apply. Oh, yeah, we talked about this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget yeah. which of his apps, it might be Cirrus, um, but, but you can look and he's categorized his apps by what they do for okay, iCloud Okay, Cirrus Drive. as in cloud. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah, you're right, Okay, correct. maybe that, uh, okay, I, I- Yeah, Howard Oakley- Thought I tried that, but- At Eclectic Light. Let me let me look. I mean, this is a good thing to um, yeah to talk about here. Uh, downloads. Well, the Wi-Fi is slow. I I, it, I said that because it, it's a good soundbite and it's funny and it happens to be true. But I really want to say how much <laughs> I love this new venue here for Max. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, like. I, I, I don't want to. I know we all know how great this is. I want to make sure everybody that's not here. Yeah. Sure. The Wi-Fi is slow. Whatever. Uh, but like the hotel is great, the conference center is great, and it's so nice to all be in the same spot and not, you know, driving 20 minutes back. It's just amazing. So thank you to Mike and the whole team for thank finding you, this place and making it happen. Indeed. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Okay, I, I did, so I'm not running out of space, so I have a two terabyte Ooh. iCloud thing, and it's, it's, not no, it's an errant. Full. It's an. Er, I'm almost certain it's an errant file. Yeah. Like it's something that's not wanting to sync. You have to determine what that file is, and that's what this tool. Would yes, it. it allow I think Cirrus or Bailiff, but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Cirrus that that you will want. And um, here I can. I'll text you the link. If you want. <laughs> okay. I'll. Um... That's, that's. Hey, we're a full service operation. <laughs> <laughs> now I suppose I could search for all files that are about 300k in size yeah <laughs> but that could be a really big that list. are in I iCloud Drive so you only have to search your iCloud Drive but and and I guess the other option would be find something like uh, 
uh, an app called Delta Walker, which does a file comparison in one folder and the other, compare what's on in the cloud drive and what's local. I mean, the other thing that might be a possibility is it just somehow got hung up and you could do the whole log out of iCloud, log back into iCloud, or even less than that, you could start by turning off iCloud Drive and turning iCloud Drive back on. Yeah, but then you get all those fun, scary messages about how everything's Resetting good. your password. <laughs> and, and remember, we, we learned that sometimes when you do that, it doesn't turn iCloud photo syncing back on. So just Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. For no apparent reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah, you very sweet. Much. Awesome. Um, I have a question for you, Adam. Uh oh. We wind up on the show talking a lot about um, generative AI and all those things. And I, I've noticed that when Pete and I talk about it, and like, like I had it write the ad scripts and I have it do all kinds of things to help the show and all those things. And when we talk about it, Pete, you generally join in the conversation. I talk, I, I do. And Adam, you stay politely silent mm -hmm. during that conversation. What are your thoughts on generative AI? <laughs> People are laughing because I probably talked to many people about this. I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, like okay. It at all. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. It scares me. Uh, to be honest, though, I went to the you know I did the session earlier and um, I actually used it today. Uh -huh. But yeah, overall, I have differing concerns about it. One is privacy. Um, so that's a big one. Just another one is I just, I worry about the overall implications in terms of society and not having to, so I see the power of the tool. Of course, right? Sure. For certain people and like all things in technology, there's, it can be used for good, it can be used for evil, all of these things and I understand that. The bigger thing that I worry about is creative thinking and starting from scratch. We were talking about this at, at dinner a little bit, right? And so when you've gone through training for say music, right? And you spent years building up a, a repertoire and you're going to use this tool to say create music or you're a writer and you've spent years developing your writing skills and now you're using it as a tool, as an aid, Yeah. right? That's great. But what about the people that don't start with that, right? It, uh, of which you, there will you, be you more. You start with this thing that gives you a 60%, 70% boost to something. Sure. And you've not had to go through the discipline or the training or the understanding. And now even like a lot of people say, well, then you get the starter and then you just have to edit it and add your own stuff. And it's either, the in the end, it's either going to be where's good or bad. The, where's the game? beginning knowledge to even be able to do that at that point, yeah. right? And then you become more dependent upon the technology to just give you the answer. So I worry about those things too. Yeah, so there's, sure. there's a lot of nuances yeah. to this, you know, but I did use it today. Yeah, and awesome. uh, cause I want to write a, I want to go to my city council to talk to them about something. So I gave it a prompt and said, Hey, I want to, how would you address the city council on this issue and blah, blah, blah. And it was great. It, it it gives, me, it that's what I love it for, thing. is that it gives me ideas, and then it's like, oh, uh, yeah, okay, great. And, yeah. and then and I kind have, of iterate. You have prior knowledge sure. and experience and all these things yes. to get to that other place, and you can use it as a tool to enhance what you already have. I worry about the longer term of, you know, it's writing the code for me, or because I'm a developer, too. Like, sure, that's sure. another thing. Yeah. Like, you can get great answers from it. But you have to have the knowledge as a developer. You have to have spent the time knowing how to debug something to be able to debug it, right? Correct. So yeah, I, if I it gives you buggy it. code and you have no experience in debugging, how do you know? Well, the good news with code <laughs> is, assuming you know what you want it to do, you run the code and you, in theory... It either does it or it don't. You, yeah, you, you've put <laughs> input you in... how to fix it? Right? Well, that's... You tell it, this is the error. Uh, here's a, here, of course, because I'm a zero coder, I've done it to get Apple, Apple script, those sorts of things. Yeah. And I'll put it in and go, oh, it didn't work. This is the error I got. I go, oh, I'm sorry. Here's what you need to do to fix that error. And more often than not, I get to the answer I want to go. Now, I don't try to super challenge it, but 
it, it has helped me in instances like that. It's also helped me in, like, I've done some retirement planning with it. Hey, what are some questions I need to ask? I've used it to help figure out, hope she's not listening, birthday gift for my wife. Hey, oh, yeah. you know, these ask me questions to help me figure out what is a good gift. I, so those are the, the, the but see, I, I love the uses thing. Yeah, the, the, there are so many uses for this thing. Yeah, that it's, and it's you're you're not looking. None of these things are. It, it, ask yeah, it I, once. I know and, where you're going. It's it's like the attorneys who asked for a brief and then submitted the damn brief to the court and got their backsides handed to them by a judge. Going, <laughs> right. are you kidding me? Yeah, they well, I mean, it's no it. different. That yeah. is, the the attorney thing is no different than looking up code on Google yeah. th that someone else wrote to solve a problem, yeah. copy, paste, and then yeah. walk away. Yeah. It's like you can't do that. Yeah. You have to engage with it, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, and I wouldn't expect to develop a commercial app for sale having this thing write code for me. Yeah. But to, to solve but some problem I want to do. Oh, yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll get and, there. Uh, another thing that came up at dinner, and I think Brett brought this up, and I thought it was something I hadn't thought about, and I thought it was kind of poignant, is like, Okay, so what happens when we start having this thing write code or write content, right? Because how it works now, right, is you feed it stuff. So what happens when it starts feeding itself its own stuff? Yeah. Oh, well, that's actually... <laughs> Snake eating its tail. <laughs> they, I forget who it was that, that's doing this, but uh, it might be OpenAI, it might be Facebook or Meta, um, has basically consumed it's gobbled up it all everything on the internet that's written it then started gobbling up all the audio and video and it we're close that they are close to finishing that and certainly anything new that we create it, it can gobble up but they are writing ai engines to generate content to feed the ai engine well, and I know that's part of I, I know that's part of how you build and test them too, right? Yeah, There's this right. whole thing where you have them sort of battle each other, right? You right. have one that's like trying to feed bad stuff to the good one, and it has to try to figure out, and, and that's how it learns. And that's right? how it learns. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. All right, cool. I'm, I'm glad we have that conversation. <laughs> I, I um, I, we could take this moment uh, to talk about our sponsors because we're talking about generative AI, and and I had. Of course, ChatGPT, as I do every week, write my ad scripts for me. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to tell you about our first sponsor. Ever feel like your inbox is a minefield of ads and creepy data trackers? Don't get caught in the email apocalypse. Switch to our sponsor, Fastmail. I've been using Fastmail as my primary email for like five, I think it's more than five years now, maybe close to 10, and I love it. It's awesome. Fastmail is an independent, employee-owned email provider that's been rocking the email world for over 20 years. No ads, no creepy data sharing, just a clean, premium inbox experience with innovative features that value your and my time. For as little as five bucks a month, you get a private inbox, and with their new multi-user plans, you can share the love with your household or business, their dual plan gives you secure private email for you and a partner, while the family plan can upgrade your whole crew up to six people. Need more reasons to switch? Imagine an email provider that customizes your workflow with colors, custom swipes, and night mode. Using Fastmail feels like having a secret layer for your emails, complete with a moat and a dragon for extra security. Sure, yeah. Fastmail even offers domain sales setting up everything for you instantly, and their human support team is available 24 seven, no robots there. Don't get caught in the email dark ages. Make email better for you with Fastmail. Try Fastmail free for 30 days and get 10% off your first year at www.fastmail.com slash MGG. Your inbox will thank you. And our thanks to Fastmail for sponsoring this episode. Yeah. Nice. Um, have you ever felt like your team's collaboration is a game of digital ping pong, bouncing between documents, spreadsheets, and apps? I certainly have. Don't get caught in the chaos. I've been using our sponsor, Coda, with another business that I have, and it's truly a game changer. It really makes it, like, that having everything in one page. Has anybody here used Coda? Oh, 
well, then you're going to check that. Yeah, you're going to love it. It, it, it you're good. As soon as you start using it, you're going to be like, oh, I need this for this project. That's how it, like, just go truly check it out. Coda combines the best of documents, spreadsheets, and apps into one magical platform. Here it comes. Uh, it's like the Swiss Army knife of productivity tools. Uh, we rely on Coda to keep everybody on the same page, quite literally. Like it's it's one page in a in on a on a web page, and it helps us centralize all our processes and like shared knowledge and that sort of thing. With Coda, you can manage your planning cycles in one spot, set and measure all your KPIs with full team visibility, and collaborate on documents, roadmaps, and tables instantly. And if you're feeling uninspired, Coda's gallery has hundreds of templates to spark your creativity. Uh, I love using Coda for tracking everything from deliverables to planning our next big project. Using Coda is like having a digital butler who can also juggle flaming swords effortlessly, keeping everything in order. So don't get caught in the digital mess. Coda empowers your startup to strategize, plan, and track goals effectively. Take advantage of this limited time offer just for startups. Go to coda.io slash mgg. That's where you want to go. Uh, you go there today and you get six free months of the team plan. That's C-O-D-A dot I-O slash M-G-G to get started for free and get six free months of the team plan. Coda dot I-O slash M-G-G. And our thanks to Coda as well for sponsoring this episode. All right, where do we go next? Do we have another Stump the Geek question out here? Gary. Oh, Gary's got a question. I think the episode's over now. <laughs> no. Okay, Gary. Sure. Okay, so... Fundamentally, I keep all my devices up to date. Okay. There is no damage, no hacking, no nothing. Okay. So that's that's fundamental ground level. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Guess again, boy wonder. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> what happens is randomly, and I use that as best I can. Sure. A contact will disappear from one or more of three devices that I have. Yesterday, I wanted to send my buddy Mike Potter an email, and he wasn't on my phone. So when I got to my iPad, there it is, and I shared the contact across so I could send him the photo. It's completely, it seems to me to be completely random. So it's not somebody I haven't talked to in 12 years. It might be you or John, and like yesterday, it was Mike. What would be your suspicion why random contacts will drop out of like two out of three. Go for it. Go ahead, Pete. Well, my first one, I've had something similar happen to me on this, and I it took me a while to figure out the common theme, and it was when a device was going into low power mode and not syncing in the background. Mm -hmm. And once I put it back in full, then then my contact would sync. Because I would, I would put a contact, say, on my MacBook, it, but it was never syncing to my phone. I'm like, I need it on my phone so I can text this guy. Or I'm going to have to manually type it in. Oh, I'm in a But, but this mode. isn't a new contact, right? right? This is... No, 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 that's no. no. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, true. So that, and it, that, it, that throws it that out. The, it runs from somebody like Mike that's a friend and not and like family members. And the low power mode, the only thing device that I do, have that does that is my iPad because the battery's going. Okay. But that's where it was. Yeah. And I, I airdropped it from my iPad to back to my phone. And one of the only things I do on iCloud is to keep the contacts going. So I have, I have a quick tip that's sort of related to this. Mike, uh, it, ironically, Mike Potter texted us the other day and told us that you can uh, actually call Apple and pay them to have your contact removed from someone else's device. And there's a special web page. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, sorry. No, you can't. At least, if, if I don't know where that Did web we page answer is. the question? No, I, I've seen this before. Um, do you have more than one contacts syncing service? Like, I, I used, for years, I used both uh, iCloud contacts and Google contacts. And then I worked for the University of New Hampshire for a little while, and I had their, like, whatever server synced up. And I found that 
on any given device, contacts would randomly put a new contact not into iCloud. Even though you tell it, like, this is the default thing, it would put it, like, on Google or whatever. And as I turned those services off on my devices, I just lost those contacts. And so, like, but, but you're only syncing with iCloud? Your devices live in low power mode full time? Okay. And this email address, like the, the record's actually not in contacts. Like it's not, that it's just not showing up in email. It'll say found, Siri found in mail. So it's like in a sub. sub so it'll say Siri yeah. found in mail. So it's in a sub. You don't have a mic. That's why I'm repeating what you're saying. Yeah. And, and the randomness is exasperating because it's not right. like an unused is it it's not an unused contact right like i my sister dropped out one time and mr potter just this day you know yesterday now is it limited to when, where this is happening is it limited to a single device or it could be one time it's your iphone one as time many as two out of three and it's not always both ios devices and again i don't hack i don't run beta everything is kept up current no damage. Um, you know, the, the obvious things that somebody trying to debug this would say, well, are you running a beta or did you hack? Are you on the command line or terminal or anything? Absolutely not. Yeah. Mm. Again, like, I hate to keep coming back to like iCloud fixes for iCloud, but like my bottom line last ditch effort is always, again, log out of iCloud and log back in. Sign out, wait, sign in, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you tried that? Like, if you know that it's in your contacts on one device and, and not in the other, one thing to check would be the cloud. Go, yes. Great, okay, we've got Make people- Make sure it's in the cloud, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or find out whether or not it's in the cloud, because that will tell you where the problem is. If it's in the cloud, then it's the, 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 the device that doesn't have the contact, because it's not pulling it down. Yeah. If it is in the cloud, or if, it, if it's not in the cloud, then that tells you it's the device that should be pushing it up, and that would be the one to then so, turn yes. off and turn on again. Yep, Thank exactly. You. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. We have we my have answer is what oh, they said. Yeah, we have. Linda's it looks like we have, more, more we have two people on this side. <laughs> Brian is uh, is managing. or Phil Donahue. Yes. We we need theme music for you. I I, I think so. Photos app on an iPad. If I take an image and I can copy it, paste it into something else, I can add it to an album. But if I try to add it to a shared album, it freezes. And I have to force quit photos and reopen it again. And then I can go to my phone and I can add the photo to a shared album. How do I fix it? This is all the time this is happening? 100%. But only on one device. Just on the iPad. Just on the iPad. Okay. But the, the, that same shared album is okay to add to from other devices. Okay. I mean, I, I would again like, like, lean towards to turn it off and turn it on again. Stupid yeah. iCloud. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I like that. That would be. But but okay. So let's let's talk through that. What is the process? What does turn it off and turn it on again mean for a shared album? Because this isn't your iCloud Photos library. This is just a shared album, right? So can you, like, like at the risk But of, it's still going through yeah, iCloud up, right? okay. photo library, right? I mean, that no, it's fine, process right? is still controlled by that, I would assume. But, like the syncing process. Yeah, but can you share, if you, if I have iCloud Photos and you don't, can we have a shared photo library between us? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, we can. Right? Yeah. Right. So do you, like, can I, if I go to a shared album, I can unsubscribe from oh. it. Uh, rebuild the photo library. <laughs> yeah, iPhoto, is iPhoto repair, right? The repair the photo library, like hold down the option. Is it option key when you? It is. When you boot, I, I'll, I'll, I'll when you boot photos, hold down the option key, yep. and you'll have the option to repair photos. Uh, yeah, maybe no, the index you, is. No, you won't. Not. On the iPad. Not, oh, iPad. Not on the iPad. The iPad. I knew that. Yeah. I was just seeing if you guys knew that. <laughs> thanks for thanks, Pete. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. It's I, was, iPad. I started testing it on my Mac. I'm like, this is uh, not the problem. Yeah, you can't do it on the. <laughs> 
I now I want to be able to do it on the iPad. Yeah, hold down the option <laughs> key on the iPad when you launch one. Um, yeah. Hmm. It seems I mean, like a you... sign out of sign out of the I Apple wonder, ID and sign back in. But... I would be curious to see what happens if you turned off Wi-Fi on the iPad and then tried to add something. It, it fails. St you've already tried this. Love that. That's great. Um, oh. Okay. So it is something. It's not tr like instantly trying to start syncing, and that's where it's wedging. It's it steps before it needs to talk to the internet. And I'm assuming you've tried a hard reboot of the iPad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can, here's a question: Can you <laughs> uninstall photos no. from nope. the iPad? No. But you could unsubscribe from the shared library and then have it reshared with you. And so I think That's to answer the, the turn right it off one, and turn yeah. it on again question, that I don't, I don't know that there's, gosh, I'm trying to think. It, it, it's clearly the photos database. Yeah. Like, it, that seems. On the iPad. Though. On the iPad, yeah, the, the local database, database on, the on the iPad, there's some index that is foobar right. and needs to be rebuilt. And if you could tell it to rebuild it, everything would be good. And so the question is, how, how do you tell it to rebuild it? Um, well, I think you could if you backed up your iPad and started from scratch. Ugh. I realize this Ugh. is the needle and the, you know, you're, you're throwing a, out the haystack. It's a full-on nuke to, and pave, get, yeah. What's that? It's a full-on nuke and pave. It's a nuke and right. pave, but that would probably rebuild that database. Mm. Painful. That's gross. It's, it, it, it's something. It, it, I'm, but you're not wrong. I'm sort of tangentially reminded of. I had mail problems, and we've had other listeners write in with this, uh, on iOS or an iPad, where. That's the, M A I L problems. What's that? You had mail problems. M A I L. Just clarifying for the audience. Thanks. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Who's your buddy? I had mail problems. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Pete and I spent eight hours yesterday. Was, God, was that yesterday? Yeah. Boy, it seems like yesterday. Um, sitting really close to each other, far closer than you've seen us here um, in Pete's Grumman Tiger as we flew out here, which was outstanding. It was awesome. But, it, there, you know, the entertainment is that Constant. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> yeah, I asked if there was an in-flight movie or some way to get a private cabin. And Hold uh, on. I, in fairness, Dave, you did say to me, Pete, I want you to pester me this weekend. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, I didn't let him finish. I, yeah. You know, okay. But anyway. That's why um, I'm here. Problems with right, a mail, mail account. Problems. Yeah. And <laughs> what I would do it, it, you know, it, it's the turn it off and turn it on again, rebuild the, the index and rebuild the database. So it stands to reason that the way one would do that is delete the mail account. These are IMAP accounts, so the, the, your device is but a client to the server. So you can turn it off, restart the device, and then re-add, not even turn it off, delete it, restart the device, re-add the account, and it's going to build a new uh, it's you know it's going to log back in and, and re-download everything. Nope, that's not how it works. On the iPad and iOS, and I believe this is also true on macOS. When you delete a mail account, it deletes the entry from the list of accounts, and that's it. That, there's no step two. It doesn't go and delete the local cache, oh. so the local cache remains. And this might like it's been a, it's been 18 months, I think. So maybe iOS 17 does delete that. But I don't think it does. It certainly didn't before. So you get to re-inherit those problems. Yeah, I would start with the like if you can just turn off the share and then yeah. turn the share back then on. Then just have it reshared with you. Yeah. And see if that does it, and then take the extreme after that if it doesn't work yeah yeah so maybe it works for photos too yeah <laughs> maybe the mail but thinking of mail how, how would you email us would you do it to feedback at macgeekcap.com i'm happy there's an echo in here what did he say he said i think feedback at macgeekcap.com still can't hear what did he say 
<laughs> that's right. Feedback at Mac Ecom Tech. I got it now. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. I think that works. I think that works. Yeah. Or you could come to MacStoc and ask in person. In Shit. person. That's right. <laughs> Uh, you can ask in person anytime you find us, but it, th there's something special and more fun about it being here. Do we have another question? Yeah. So, well, when I link to something, when, when, I, when I'm like in the uh, Feedly or something, and a news article, and I, and I click the little thing to open it in Safari, I get this message occasionally. It happens other times too when I'm linking. It says, Safari tells me, a problem repeatedly occurred on, and then the name of the website, blah, 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 blah. And it won't load. And it just sits there and doesn't do anything. And you can, you can then manually put the URL in, and it still won't work. It still won't work, you said? It still will not work. Yeah. What, what will get it to work like if you close the tab if you force quit safari come back in and type it in does that work it's no the most i think i mean as a web developer the most common way i see this happening is something's happened where it sets up a circular redirect so it like tries to redirect the link and then it hits a redirect again it hits a redirect and it will give up after a right. number of it, times you can see it like trying and trying and yeah trying. Is this a link you could open on an, have you tried opening it on another device right in that moment? Uh, I have, tr actually I've tried it on uh, Chrome and I think I st oh. it still doesn't work. Yeah, it's often just well, a but bad Chrome, link. And this is on like, your phone, not on, on your phone, Mac. On my phone, right, yeah. Okay, so Chrome on your Mac is still kind of sort of Safari. Right. Right, so at least currently. That's, is that, that's not changing in iOS 18 that we know of? I, I don't see any heads shaking. I thought Chrome was. I see the correct heads telling me no. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, oh. What's that? Only um, in Europe, they say. <laughs> what, huh, there... I wonder. I wonder what your what's your DNS setting? Is, is it only happening on that one device? Well, this is the device I use for. That's the yeah. Okay. So I don't... Make sure your DNS is set to something that is like current and active. It would be odd for your DNS to be set to something janky, but I know this guy, Pete, and he calls me with weird problems about his computers, and I've learned, who's your At buddy? At least I don't call you about my mail problems. Yeah. Just saying. That's right. Um, <laughs> I've learned. have a show title. I was after a callback. Oh, oh, my God. Um, I've learned to assume the unassumable, that, like, what could Pete have done that he forgot about and doesn't didn't know in the moment? And it, this is going to sound. I, I hope. Listen, this he's sound just wrong. pissed because it took him four hours of his time to fix my problem <laughs> that I inflicted on myself. But it, but but you but what it takes the four hours to do is to figure out well what the hell did if he do? you had gone and edited your DNS settings at some point. Yeah for some reason I don't understand and you certainly never told me about, that might cause this. Would yeah. you check those? Like there was a thing you did on your Mac with your Etsy host file. Yeah. It, and it took half of, a, <laughs> half of a day for me to be like, well, this isn't making any sense. Check this file in the terminal. And it, like, I had to tell you what to do. Did you, you yeah. even know what an Etsy host file Hell was? Hell no, I still don't know what it is. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> but like, I, this is, it's not bad. Like Adam's this is how we his learn. Backside off here. <laughs> no, this is how we learn. We we yeah. break things and right. fix them and and like you can't know what you don't know other than by like diving don't in be, and learning. Don't be afraid to break it. Only, Correct. You know, I I broke it and had no idea I had for weeks, if not months. Right. Yeah, because you called me on that particular one. You called me about one specific symptom. And then when we solved it, you solved it. You were like, "Oh, this fixes these other problems that I hadn't even asked you about." But that's a, another thing for well, for anybody that's asking for tech support, but also for people who are doing tech support for a living. Asking users generally don't know what you need to know, right? Right, and and it's not their fault. It, it's not really your fault, although. I would say it's if you're the one helping, it's your responsibility to just start asking. What I else say it's Dave's fault. He answered the phone. 
<laughs> that is my fault. Yeah. It, it, and, and sometimes my wife tells me, do you have Pete on mute yet? Yeah. It's, it's Saturday night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. I mean, my favorite question. Don't ask, answer that. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't going to answer it. My favorite question to often ask in those moments is like, what else have you done or changed recently? Even if it's not related, you don't think it's related to this problem. Like, what have you done recently on your computer that might have changed anything? Really? Yeah. The problem. Did you install a new was, app? Did you? Yeah. yeah, the problem with that one was I had no recollection of changing this file. Um, right, you wouldn't have known to tell me that. Right, right. Because you, you did it. You did it at midnight asking. one day when you were messing around with something. I, and in some in some step of something, I changed it. And yeah, yeah, it happens. It, like we yeah. all do it. It's it's like yeah. you're not alone. Yeah, you, yeah. But on on this one, I it can likely not be your problem. It could be that that website, especially depending upon where you got the link. It was a valid link at one point. Websites sometimes change owners. They do redirects. Like somebody set up a 301 redirect for some link that's an old link. And it and dies. And now it's just dead or cyclical. Yeah. And I wouldn't put a lot of. So yeah. I, I looked on the DNS. It says DNS automatic. Great. That's what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I mean, I've literally caused this problem on websites I've worked on. Oh, same. I've yeah. accidentally done it. Like some dev goes in and sets up a bad 301 and it's like. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I did it and then had to make you fix it uh, with Mac Observer more than once. There, yeah. There were a lot of interesting conversations. Yeah. This might not be a you problem. This might be an yeah. us problem or them problem. A them pro yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have a question. So we're here at MacStock as everyone by this point knows. And um, the setup on the stage, we'll post some pictures of this, or, or maybe people already have. Uh, there are two chairs and a big couch up here. So it, we were joking about this being geek therapy, which obviously it is. <laughs> when we walked in to do this, Mike and the team here oh, no. had moved the couch up and like done all this setup, which we thought we were gonna have to do, and we were fine, you know, like got here early enough to make sure we could do that. and. Um, there were three bags yeah, on the couch. I, I was stumped. Yeah, yeah, and they have our names on them. I don't know who put them here. I don't know what's in them, but I think it's time to find out. Well, there's <laughs> no wires protruding wanna... from them. There's <laughs> nothing that appears to be leaking. I think uh, um, without, uh, you yeah, know, we're gonna make the decision. Or let's take them, a vote of the audience. Should we find out who put them here first or should we open them first? Open. Open first. Okay. Great. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, here we go. All three of us are going. Okay. So it's, I have jello, mm, delicious jello and a spoon, a snack pack of what looks to be red jello. So I got the red flavor. Is we this, all, I've had one with the show for a long do, time. This isn't some sort of inside joke. Well, there's always room for jello. So there is always room for jello. And in the, in the bag, there's now room for even more jello since I took it out. Oh. Uh, <laughs> however, it, so when we were running Mac Observer, and I think you were part of this staff meeting, but maybe you weren't, um, th it says snack pack on it. We would wind up talking about food at staff meetings sometimes, and <laughs> Kelly's laughing because Kelly was there. <laughs> Kelly knows. And uh, oh, I'm getting a we kid, so we talked about starting another site because that happens that you have these ideas and so i do still own we did not sell all the domains that we registered uh when we sold mac observer we did sell most of the mac observer ones but the one of the domains we didn't sell that i still own is snack observer so i don't know i am observing a snack so this might be the first segment of the snack observer podcast oh yeah. i don't think that's what this is though um do we have to eat it for them to observe it as we snack? Oh, on them? <laughs> well, no, we're just observing the snack. It's okay. not the eat the right. snack observer. Right. I don't know. Does someone, does, can we give a microphone to someone that wants to? Would you, would you like the mystery unveiled? I, I think it's time that. to yeah, unveil it. Yeah. Well, I will, I will unveil Corky and he can explain. <laughs> Hi, Corky. Okay. Today is National Enjoy Jello Day. And National Paper Bag Day. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, this is awesome. I, 
This is amazing. I mean, this is going to be Brilliant. a segment on Business Brain. Now, tomorrow is National Frank and Beans Day, and, na and Sunday was National Nude Appreciation Day. <laughs> so nude? Nude? N-U-D-E? Nude, nude appreciation. Okay, I got to go. All right. <laughs> This is, so so the, for Friday the 12th, it's Jello Day and Paper Bag Day. We the picked the right day. The interesting, <laughs> so we're recording this on the 12th. As I said, it, it releases on Monday, which is National Be a Dork Day or um, Celebrate Your Dorkness Day or whatever I said. I, I remember seeing the Jello thing. I don't remember seeing the Paper Bag thing because we released an episode of Business Brain today. And I do the whatever day it is for the release date of all the podcasts that I do, not just this one. So this is outstanding. Thank you. Well played. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> You're not going to eat your jello? No, I'm doing a show. <laughs> it's cool. Well, now you all know right. Corky is an official fan of the show because he knows your lead in, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. That's outstanding. Brilliant. Yeah. Do we have uh, any other questions from the audience here? Great. Right. Oh, he turned no, the mic from off. off. Hang on. I think we, we should have it on. The battery's dying. Uh -oh. oh, okay. Earlier today, I got to stump Allison, and I really need an answer to this question. I have an iPad, and I do not have a keyboard that ex is external to that. And I keep running into things that tell me to press the command key on the iPad. How do I do that with a built-in keyboard? Ooh, I know we, who we knows researched the answer. this earlier. Go ahead. I know the answer. Dave knows. He researched it while she was talking about that. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> It, can't it, be done. It is, it is not a thing. However, <laughs> in in sort of digging into it, some alternative ideas that might do some of the things that you might want to do with the command key is are leveraging like assistive touch, which is the annoying if you don't know why it's there, um, little button that you can put on the screen that does things that's part of the you know accessibility stuff. But if if what you want to do is change apps with a you know, command tab thing on the iPad, you need an external keyboard to do that. Either either Bluetooth or uh, wired. The yeah. good news is, I mean, external Bluetooth keyboards are relatively cheap these days. So if you want to invest in one, you don't have to go with a big expensive Apple one or, you know, you don't have to go with a magic keyboard, even though that's really cool. But any Bluetooth keyboard should work. Yes. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. It does. Kills Unless your you get the You yeah. get really tiny ones. Yeah. 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 Or, yeah. Some of them are actually iPad covers. Right. Slash cases. So. You know, though, I'm wondering, like, I don't know how this would work because there's no mapping functionality on the iPad, but a keyboard doesn't have to have 30 keys on it to be a keyboard. Right. Like, all you need is the command key, right? <laughs> so is there a world, and maybe all you need is the command key. Like could, if you, and I, I would, if somebody here has an iPad with a keyboard, try this, you know, bring up the, oh, you can't bring up the on-screen keyboard when. I think you can. Oh, can you? Okay. There's great. a button okay. usually. Okay, yeah. great. So bring up the on-screen keyboard, hold down the command key on the physical keyboard, because that's the only place it exists. And then on the iPad screen keyboard, hit T, uh, or his, sorry, hit tab. Uh, brain's not working right. Uh, and see if it brings you to the app switcher. Like, does it have to be command tab on the same keyboard, or, is, or does the command key modify the tab key on the virtual keyboard? And I'm being told it doesn't work. So you would need to figure out which commands you want to do. You know, if it's command tab, okay, so you need a, a keyboard that has a command key and a tab key. What else do you want to do? You know, you want to print with command P, great. So, you know, command tab and P. What other commands? And then you build like a tiny little keyboard 
and uh, Bluetooth that sends just those things, and you could maybe make it real small and keep it in your pocket. I, I have one better. It almost can, sounds like can, a stream deck. <laughs> what? It's the answer. Could you get could answer. you get shortcuts to do it? So could you build a shortcut on the Mac that types command whatever and then run oh. the shortcut? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like oh, that. We're get, I see a couple That's even notes. better than my stupid answer. I see answer. a couple head shakes out here that say no. No. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, I would imagine shortcuts for security reasons wouldn't let you do, uh, like, keyboard inputs. Why? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that it might not. Because like, but... someone could get you to download a, oh, yeah, a shortcut and run it. And it... But shortcuts could do nefarious things. Shortcuts can change data. We have a shortcut that, True. that changes the notes that we do. True, so yeah, it yeah. could be very destructive if, if you program it to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, now you just, now we have new vectors for hacking. Oh, we'll create <laughs> malware shortcuts. That sounds nice. like a great use of our time. <laughs> Social Format, engineer C people to download and run them. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> that that's how we should use our powers. Yeah, that'll be that sounds great. Can I create a shortcut that modifies Pete's Etsy host file randomly? <laughs> Ooh, that's all it yes. it to me. I'll I'll run it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you already have it. Can you yeah. share that? <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> uh how are we doing on time here? Yeah, we're cooking. Um, we can we can take another question or two. Linda had one. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Just an update. You have succeeded. I have not stumped the geeks. Problem solved. Thank you. Boom. Wait. What was it? This was back to your cal calendar. Was it a calendar? It was a calendar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We figured it out. Thank you very much. Nice. <laughs> Love it. That's great. Yeah. That's just from doing stuff for too long. Even a blind squirrel, Dave. I won't Even a blind yet. squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of us in the plane was the blind squirrel? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I Do have a different version of that, and I won't repeat it here because it is a friendly show. We've kept it friendly. <laughs> you had a great idea earlier today, Pete. It, it's, I mean, it's a thing that you've already done. When Allison was doing the session that Pat alluded to earlier, asking the question about the command tab that you can't do. Um, the find, Al, Allison, you asked, does anyone use the Finder toolbar and for what? And oh, Pete, yeah. you started showing me, you've got a couple of things and, and one of them related to images is awesome. Oh yeah, so I have, I have one, you just, you can create this yourself in Automator if it's still anywhere on your laptop. Uh, mine, I can't tell you the exact, but it's in there about, reducing the file size you can go in and manually do it i create a little automator app that takes a seven megabyte image file and crunches it down to a couple hundred kilobytes and then takes that image file and puts it in a separate directory so all i have to do is click on an image file or, or highlight an image file and right up in the toolbar of my finder i click on squeeze is what i named that and it, it's a picture of a hand with a sponge. Squeeze. So I can see it. Oh, that's the one I want. Click that file. And then I just go into my squeezed files. And there it is. And now I can send it over the web for days when you have 32.4 kilobytes per second. I can send that file quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, there, so. There's an app. If you don't want to go through the automator steps, um, of course, you could probably email us and Pete could share it with you. Yeah. Um, it, there's an app called Image Optim, I M A G E O P T I M. The link will be in the show notes. That uh, that does that same kind of thing, and you could put a yeah. you know you can put that app up in your thing. now. I, I had customized it so it goes into a specific yeah. folder yeah. in my pictures subdirectory, but or so, now subdirectory. Now sorry, brain, that's a Windows term. Sorry, my brain going because I use a set app app that's amazing for the same thing oh. called, and I want to say it's called Crush. It's got an yeah, orange icon. Crush, yeah, and I think that yeah. works on PDF files too, among other things. It works on yeah any much, any yeah. image file, and it's basically Image Optim with a really nice clean GUI on it. Really? Yeah. Because Image Optim is free, so that's yeah. the one I found years ago. And when you're publishing on the web, you want to 
crunch down images and strip out all the metadata and all that yeah. stuff. So uh, that that's where that came from. In fact, I think you told me and all of us oh, at yeah, the Mac Observer Optum, team yeah. about Image Optum years ago. So. Um, you say it's called Crush inside? I think it's called Crush, or it might be called Squeeze. That's where he threw me off. Oh. I know it's got an orange for an icon, and I've used it forever, and I want to say it's called Crush. Might it be called yeah. Squash? Squash. Squish. Squash. One of those words. Squish, squash. Squish, squash, squash. Yeah. Cool. All right, we'll put a link to that in the show notes, too. Squash for Mac. Yeah, um, and I love it because it makes, like, you can turn the sounds off, but I like the sounds on because it makes this cool sound when you're like squishing your file oh, or squashing your file. Yeah, sure, why not? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've maybe time for one more or are we finished here? Well, okay. well let me try and stump, uh -oh. Uh -oh. especially yeah. Dave oh. Hamilton. Yep. No, it's time to go, Dave. We're done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> this was targeted at Dave. Dave brought me to Mesh up right up the road a few years ago. Dave did a fantastic presentation on Mesh networking. So I went from an airport extreme network to a Eero, and now I've upgraded the Eero network. So my question is this. I've got two Intel Macs, a mini and uh, effectively an iMac. We've got an M1 and an M2 Mac. We can't get with file sharing turned on the M1 and the M2 Mac to see each other, all signed in under the same Apple ID. The M1 can see the two Intel Macs. The M2 can see the two Intel Macs. The two Intel Macs can see each other with file sharing. So once my wife's computer, once mine, we're using an iCloud Drive folder to exchange folders now. I've tried Ethernet, I went back to the Airport Extreme, and I tried the second version of the Eero network, and we can't get file sharing to work between the M1 and the M2 uh, so MacBook Pro and, and Air. Are the, M, the Intel Macs are visible by everybody. The Apple Silicon Macs are not visible to anyone. Is that correct? No. They no, can not see the Intel Max, but they can't see each other. But can the Intel Max see the Apple Silicon Max? Yeah. 100%. Okay, so it's just that the two Apple Silicon Max can't see each other. Have you tried forcing it by IP address? So instead of just looking in the Bonjour browser where it shows you the things, you can go in the Finder, and I'm almost certain it's Command K. Yep, my fingers are right. Uh, and, and put in like smb colon slash slash and the IP address of the other, you know, from one of the Apple Silicon Macs to the other. Can you do that and will it show up? I haven't tried it. Try I that. Mean, typically because typically just enable file sharing for yeah. the system settings. I, I, try that. It, obviously, that's not the way it should work, but that would be really interesting to see if when if it's a bonjour announcement discovery thing or if it's actually somehow blocking the connection between the two of them i mean there could be some weird firewall setting on one of them that blocks the other that at like two in the morning you were messing around trying it's to solve a different Etsy problem file. and you <laughs> installed pete so i'm sorry brian uh, <laughs> So that I mean, that's what I would try, just to see can they can they talk to each other, and even just go to the terminal and ping the IP address of one from the other, and see if it answers. J again, just to get like, if if the I would first try it in the Finder and see if they talk to each other, and if they do, then you know it's just a discovery problem, and you can make a shortcut and or a, and then you're done, or an alias or something. And then you're Where done. they're it, logged in, iPod wise, wouldn't make any Brian? difference, right? The, it's, oh, okay. Yeah, Adam. Say, ask that again. So the question was, because you said they're all logged in the same iCloud account, yeah. but I think for local network sharing, that wouldn't even matter. Like, you wouldn't even have to have It iCloud might sharing. help, but it wouldn't matter. Well, the reason I'm asking is because you say it's the same iCloud account. Is it exactly the same email on both machines? Because we've run into this problem. So I've had my iCloud address since the iTools days. Yeah. Anybody remember iTools? Yep. <laughs> so I've had at Mac, at me, at iCloud. And so 
my wife and I have shared an account in the past and we'll have one machine logged in at me and one at Mac and that made a difference. Interesting. That shouldn't matter with so this because the they're same on the same account. local network. It's the yeah. same account, all the same account, but if it's not exactly the same Login credentials, it would cause. Yeah, but th this, I you're right. Problems. This wouldn't yeah. be impacted. But that's typically that. iCloud problems where yeah. you run into. Yeah. So what Adam's asking is, did your wife unfriend you? No. Uh, <laughs> no. But I think for for, for oh, something okay. like Samba, yeah. you know, basically Samba, what's what we're talking about? Right? Yeah. That, yeah. That's well, and the other thing that I was going for was if you use tail scale. So if if you're on, like, if you're really uh, retentive like me, you might set hard reservation, DHCP reservations for each of your machines in your local network. If you don't have that, then if you have TailScale, that, that kind of does that for you, and you would find it, you would find that machine that way as oh, well through. TailScale might actually solve that. Yeah. It shouldn't, like, you shouldn't, shouldn't need to do it, it that way, but yeah. it, it should work the way you want it to work. But yeah, I would try the, the direct to IP address and just see, can the two Macs see each other at any level, and that, That'll at least give you the next question to ask, which is kind of how we operate as troubleshooters, right? You could also SMB to the network name, right? The dot yeah. local. Yeah, I just figured let's let's skip the network name. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, just yeah. go to the IP. Let's not let's take out all the variables we can and just go straight to it. But yes, in theory, you should be able to to SMB to the network name too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so he, he asked, asked if you're there using was a question from the audience. Oh, I've yeah. done it with Ethernet. I've done it with the old yeah. Airport Extreme, and I've done it with the, the with the six point whatever Euro network mesh. And it's interesting. The one other thing I'll point out is that the Intel Max, the user account, always I've used Migration Assistant to move over when I've upgraded the computer. So the M1 and the M2 are effectively they have a lineage to each other, that the M1 user account became the M2 user account, sure. all signed into the Apple ID, but they've never been able to see each other. Now see, this is great, because you're sharing lots of extra information. The magic piece probably hasn't been shared yet to like unlock this, but what you just said, and I know you said it the first time, but we you know, fixated on something else. You tried this over Wi-Fi, you also tried it over Ethernet those would, by definition, because they're different physical IPs, interfaces, yeah. they would get different IP addresses. So the chances that you went into like IP tables and set up a firewall rule, if you had set it up to block one IP, well then going to ethernet, it would be a different IP. So I don't think you did that, but on the off chance that you did, moving the interface would solve that problem, which is why it's a good step to take. So yeah, I would try pinging it and just see. It might be, there might be something weird in, you know, the whole Bonjour discovery thing is, it's called zero conf and I, what that really tells you is you don't get to change its settings and fix it. So sometimes you just have to work around it. I, I have machines that won't show up in the, in the browser, but I, you know, when you go, and when I say the browser, I mean the network browser. You go in the, into the finder and you choose network, and you can see all your devices, and it's like one's missing. And I just hit Command K and I SMB colon slash slash to either the IP or, like Adam said, the network right. name. And then it connects, and it's like totally fine. Now, to be clear though, moving the interface would only work if you either disabled the Wi Fi after moving the interface or changed the network priority, right? Or Ethernet usually defaults de it with built-in Ethernet, so not like dongle Ethernet, but built-in Ethernet by default has higher priority than the Wi-Fi built-in. So if you've gone back in, in theory, if you didn't change any settings, which of course you might have, going back and forth between Ethernet and Wi-Fi, you would have changed those things. But you're right. If you're going to go to Ethernet, turn off Wi-Fi just to be certain that's a great point, yeah. Wow. All right, we got to get nerdy. <laughs> I think we're done. We're done? Yeah, I think, I mean, well, we got to play the music done. and all that stuff. Done. But, yeah, I think we're good. So uh, I don't know how to do this without, uh -oh. um, well, no, I, you know, I usually have like a little mixer. Where's the band, Dave? That, Did you forget you know, to hire the band? I, I didn't. Oh, but, no. Yeah, there, there, there I was able to fade it in, see? Yeah. Yep.
Thank you for hanging out with us Indeed. in person and wherever you are, if you're listening at home or not at home or not here with us. <laughs> Thanks so much to Mike and the team for creating MacStock and making this happen this year and this great space and all of it. Thanks to Cashfly for providing the bandwidth to get the show from us to everyone that's not here. It'll probably also get it to many of you if you're subscribed, yeah. of course. And uh, yeah. Huge opening day. This is awesome. Yeah, good opening day at MacStock. I agree. Yeah, this was great. Yeah. Have fun for the rest of the weekend or the rest of the week or the rest of your day whenever you're listening. Uh, don't do anything we wouldn't do. Take care of your shoes. What's other advice we might be able to give Pete? What's it, what, what's it say on Pete's shirt? Can we all do this together? I, I want to I wanna wait until the music stops. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. Uh, I'll count two. to three, and we'll do it on four. Ready? One, two, three. Don't get caught. That's how we do it. Thanks so much, everybody. See ya. So much fun. <laughs> Thank you, no Roger. applause, just throw money.